So, welcome to GADEPS. Bem-vindo ao seminário GADEPS, Geometry, Arithmetic and Differential Equations of Periods. Today is going to talk uh, George Duque. He's doing a PhD at IMPA, and he will finish uh, this year. So, he's going to talk about his uh, the main topic of uh, his thesis. Okay, George Duque. Hello. Go ahead. <laughs> Hello. Thank you very much for the invitation to this seminar. Uh, we are talking about the hot cycle in and Gauss hypergeometric function. Uh, uh, in this fifth part, I I will give the context as well as what we will understand as hot cycle throughout in this tau. In the second part. Uh, I will explain how to compute periods on affine cycles. In the next part, uh, I will we will introduce this concept uh, the, of strong generic of cycle, and we will see some examples. Uh, in the last part, as an application of the above, we will find algebra expression involving the hypergeometric function. So. The, the objective or purpose of this study is to explain the, the different concepts and ingredients that this theorem. We will define as a space of hot cycles uh, called the strong generic hot cycle. The idea is, is that you can move one hot cycle through a family of varieties if these cycles continue to be hot. This theorem gives give us a way to find a set of generators of a strong generic hot cycle in, in, in this particular case. So using this in some extra result like one one left theorem, we can obtain we can obtain algebra expression involving the hypergeometric functions such like that the 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 every hypergeometric function are no algebraic. Later, later I will talk quickly about this function and I will try to explain how to obtain these results. Um, any question or I can continue? Can you hear me? Uh, Georgia, maybe each each slide you let a little bit more time that the people read, yeah? Sorry, sorry. Deixa um pouco mais tempo para as pessoas leiam os slides. Okay, okay. But in, in, we we later we we come back to this theorem and to these results. But this result is just one expression, so that is algebra. But this function is the hypergeometric functions such that the, these hypergeometric functions are no algebraic. So, okay, let, let me continue. Okay, we want to, to study the hot cycle on a perturbation of Fermat variety. For us, the Fermat variety is defined by this, J, this polynomial G. And the perturbation is given by this polynomial P when this criminal no zero. The classic, the classic Fermat variety is when all these exponents are equal. equal. Now, considering the, consider the, the, the variety defined by, by F equal to zero. Usually when we look at this compactification in the project GSP, it is not smooth. So we take the compactification in the, in the way project E space. For this, we homogenize F, we homogenize this F the, the, in, in the following way. This is the homogenization given by this, this formula. Uh, here, here, this is not necessarily smooth, but we have a theorem called Griffin's Steinbrick theorem that explicitly describe a basis for the n-comology of D, it is filtration. 
Basically, this is the theorem used to obtain the definition of the hot cycle given in this table. Okay, here, here, here is just the how how we define the the weight is is given by this equally. So we have the affine part. We have the 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 way hypersurface. If we have x is the, the singularization of D. Although our hot cycle we support it in U, they are really hot cycle of X. Okay. Here we have the definition of hot cycle. The important thing is to remember that they are cycling the affine part so that the some integral are zero. These thing integrals are zero. But remember, we, what we are interested in cycle of a smooth compact variety. This is the reason for this denominator. Okay, these the, this cycles in this de denominator, they are cycled in a fan variety that in the compactification are zero. Okay. Now I, I am going to, to explain how to compute this integral. Okay. Now no, note that this 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 is this is a m plus one form in C m plus one with pole along U. But in this context, the residue is uh, an isomorphism. We have an isomorphism between the m plus one cohomology of c m plus one minus u to the n cohomology of u. Remember the of u is 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 f equal to zero. Now, now when 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 we have this form, we can compute the residue using this this equation. Now to to calculate the residue of a form with high order pole, we reduce the pole to order one and then apply the residue. We take a, a one form with high order pole and we reduce the pole. In this context, we have a exactly form where we reduce the pole. This is the form. Okay, here, here, here delta is, is the discriminant of polymer, polynomial. This is the one reason that we need the, the the polynomial has discriminant no zero. If the polynomial q1 and q2 satisfy this equation. Okay, the really important thing is to remember that we can reduce the pole and when we have a pole of order one, we can compute or calculate the residue using this equation. Now, Let's consider a basis of vanishing cycle the disomology and consider a vanishing cycle of this homology. Remember that our polynomial of, poly, of polynomial of interest is j, g plus p equal to zero. With this basis, basis, with this basis, we can describe a basis for the onomology of g plus plus P equal to zero. This means we can describe a basis for the n homology of U. Okay. For, for those who don't know that they are vanishing cycles, the idea is they are cycled in the in the fiber, which is for example, for example, J, J equal to V, where V is the regular value, so that the cycle degenerating to a point in the fiber G equal to C, where C is a critical value, as, is, as seen in, the, in this figure. Okay. Now, then we take a vanishing cycle in the one homology, and we take a vanishing cycle in the other homology. <coughs> Sorry. If, if we take a path, a path, a path, we take a path T that connects a critical value of the one 
of the one polynomial, for example, P, with the other critical value, the, the polynomial G. In this case, the polynomial G just have only critical value. This only critical value is zero. Thus, when we take the union, the Cartesian product of this cycle along the T, this induces a cycle in the N homology of T. This cycle is called the joint cycle of delta one and delta two. I repeat again, you, you take the Cartesian product of this cycle with this cycle, and then you take the union along this path. This induces a cycle in the N homology of U. This is just the formalization, the intuitively idea the, in, the, in the previous slide. You take. Maybe two. you have mentioned the references that, for them, the idea of joint cycles comes from mainly from singularity theory and this Arnold Kusenz at Varshenko's book. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, the definition of the vanishing cycle is you take two vanishing cycles, you, you take the union, the this Cartesian product. This is the denotation. Okay, this is the denotation. If the joint cycle satisfies the following proposition of theorem. Okay, the end homology of U has a basis of joint cycle. For this, we take a basis of vanishing cycle of the zero homology of P equal to B in basis of vanishing cycle of the N minus one, minus one homology of G equal to minus B. And then we consider their joint cycle. If this is a basis for this homology. So by, by definition, uh, uh, in a sense, the, the integral the uh, joint cycle is, is the proof of integrals that depend in each cycle. But of course, this is not, this is not entirely correct. In the next slide, we will say the exact formula, but the most important, but the most important thing is to remember this, the, this intuition, because we, we will use a lot of this intuition in, in the definition of strong generic code cycle. So here we have the formula for the integral of a four with four of order one on a joint cycle. It is the integral. <coughs> this is the integral depending of the delta delta k. In this is this here is the integral depending in the delta alpha. Okay, here. Okay, notice the the this integral is 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 over one dimensional cycle. So we, we reduce the integral in n dimensional to one integral one dimensional because we, 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 we know how to compute this integral. Okay, here delta, delta, here delta is the zero, zero, zero cycle given by, by this definition. In the Avera, in the a bet Vera, is, is given by this, this, this equality in the number gamma EQ is given by this equality, but it's not really important. And, and this is the integral depends of delta alpha. Okay, okay to, 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 to integrate forms with a high or pole, we reduce the pole and apply this formula. Will of the above we can calculate periods, for example. Is consider 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 the this polynomial in this particular polynomial. So <coughs> where in this polynomial lambda is, is just a complex number. Okay, this is the integral, the integral in this part here. This part here is the integral depends of delta one. And this part here is the integral depends depends of delta alpha. In this function is a hypergeometric function. Okay. 
a, a this integral we compute explicitly explicitly is 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 this is the product of 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 root of unity with this beta function. So the important thing to remember here uh, is is with this polynomial with this pol particular polynomial. Uh, the periods except by algebraic number are combination of hypergeometric function with a product of beta function. This beta function is this beta function. Okay. Maybe, uh, George, maybe in the, in the previous slide, just uh, okay. maybe you say that there is, uh, okay, well, once again, algebraic number, beta value, values of the beta function, and then this combination of the uh, function. Yes. This structure uh, uh, is the most important uh, part of the calculation. Yes, yes, it's important to remember this. It, it, it not, it's not just this form. All forms this, this have this structure. A beta function is one combination of the hypergeometric function, except for algebraic number. Okay. Okay. Now, the just for, for, for Paul, the hypergeometric series is defined by this series. If the, ra the radius, the conversion is one. The holomorphic function defined by this theory, as well as an elliptic continuation, is called Gauss hypergeometric function. In this function, satisfies a linear differential equation. This linear differential equation. It, it, is, it is a function with in properties. Other function can be expressed in terms of hypergeometric function, such as Chebyshev polynomial, Legendre polynomials the inverse of some function, logarithm function, j invariant, just for, okay. Now, now let's define a generic hot cycle. Now let's define generic hot cycle in a perturbation of Fermat variety. Of course, remember, this is the Fermat polynomial. In consider the, the parameter space, P, where P is the space of polynomial in one variable with this criminal no zero of degree n. Consider, consider also the family in a fine variety is given by j, j plus P equal to zero. So the, project, the projection is locally trivial, say infinite of duration. This means we have natural way to move cycle along the fiber. Okay, now consider, consider the, the, the parameter space. Uh, now let's take a whole cycle in the fiber T equal to zero. Okay, we, we consider, we consider this, this cycle delta to zero. It's called, it's called a generic whole cycle if it is still a host when you move it along any part in the parameter space, as seen in the figure. This means you take this hot cycle, if this is the hot cycle, this is the hot cycle, this is the hot cycle, if delta t is hot cycle. When, when, when this cycle satisfies this, we call generic hot cycle. Okay? Any question or? Okay, here is just the, the formalization of generic hot cycle. And we denote the generic hot cycle or the space the generic of cycle in, in this way. Now, we are going to define a subspace of this space that we will call a strong generic of cycle. For this, we, we use the, the, the integral. Okay? Again, again consider a, vanish, a basis of vanishing cycle of the disomology, a basis of vanishing cycle of this homology. E, if we know that the C set is a basis of this homology. This means that the, every cycle in U is written the, this way. Uh, delta is, 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 is equal, to, equal to the sum the delta K with delta K is this, is this sum the joint cycle. But now, Remember the, the condition of being hot cycle is given by integral that this type R0. 
but 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 this integral can be expressed in this way. Okay. Observe that this expression, observe that this expression here is is independent of the polynomial of the polynomial p. This means is independent of the parameter of the parameter t. So, is if, if if this expression is zero. This implies that this integral is zero. It this implies that, that this cycle is hot cycle. Even more, with this expression not depends of the parameter this, this, if this is zero, this integral is zero. If this cycle is, is a generic hot cycle. So this, 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 all these leads of the following definition. Okay, we consider the Q vector space. Uh, this vector so that satisfy this this equation. If we have a natural map, natural map, so that you you take the vector is you assign this cycle. This cycle is 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 one cycle in the in you, in you. But by by for this condition, this means it's a hot cycle. Okay. Okay. Now, now remember that in the previous exam we saw the exact exact value of this integral. Use this exact value, we can rewrite the definition of a. This is the redefinition. So, we obtain an arithmetic definition of the strong generic hot cycle space. This is given by this equality. Okay. If, if by, by, it's clear, it's clear that, that the strong generic hot cycle space is a subspace of generic hot cycle space by this condition. Okay, some observation, we, we don't know if the natural mind is injective or when it's injective. We don't know if these two space are the same or when they are the same. The other observation we have, we have this isomorphism. This means that the, the delta is a strong generic hot cycle if and only if every delta k are a strong generic hot cycle. Okay. Okay. Any question or? Go ahead. Maybe you you uh, you have to be a little bit slower in the slides. Let the people, if they want, they read at least a little bit the slide. Listen to you. Okay, okay. I will lead it. <laughs> okay. 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 In some in some special case will be to able to calcul calculate the dimension of this Q vector space. In, and therefore, we will obtain an upper bound of the dimension of the dimension of a strong generic hot cycle. This is the content of the of the theorem and also the beginning. Let's see it again. Okay, we have this the theorem theta xp0 be the singularization of the wake hypersurface D given by F homogenization of F equals J plus P0, where J is the Fermat polynomial and P0 is a polynomial of degree M. For, 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 for this exponent R equal to, to, to 2 in M greater or equal to 7, we have the, the dimension of the strong generic hot cycle is less than or equal to m minus 1 when mn is even or 0 in the other ways. Okay. The proof gives a basis of the vector space A and therefore a set of generator of the strong generic hot cycle. 
even when this condition is, is not satisfied. Therefore, for m less than seven, we also obtain an upper bound for the dimension of this space. Just for, for show one example, this is the example. In the same context the, of the theorem, we consider this polynomial. In P, P0 is a polynomial of degree of degree four. So we have we have a upper bound of the dimension of this space of, of this space. In this space depends of M N modul modulo 12. So to say acá, for example, when when M N is equal to 1, 5, 7, 11, modulo 12, we don't have a strong generic code cycle. Okay, let's Let's go back to the theorem and see another case. This is the, the theorem. When this exponent are two, this number, this exponent are prime. If these two numbers are relative prime, we have we we don't have a strong generic whole cycle if this condition is satisfies. Okay, again. The proof of this of this of this affirmation uh, gives a way to calculate the dimension of A when we don't have this condition. Notice the the notice the, the parts that don't don't sorry notice the part parts that not satisfy this condition are fine. Using this, we obtain, for example, other corollary. For example, if in the same context of the of the uh, of the previous theorem, we considered this polynomial when p is prime. If these two numbers are are relative prime, if p series is a polynomial of degree of degree three, we have we have we have the dimension of the strong generic whole cycle is zero. If z is congruent to one and five modulo c. For for p is three when p is three. Okay, we have another example. Here 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 with in this in this example we don't have this this condition. This means this this is is bigger than one over two. Okay. Let's go back to the theorem. Is it another case where we don't have a strong generic whole cycle? The other case is when, when the exponents are different prime numbers. In this case, we don't have a strong generic whole cycle. So, in, certain, in some cases, we know how to find a strong generic whole cycle. As an application to what we have done so far, we are going to obtain algebraic expression involving the hypergeometric function. Okay. Now, now remember the following Delin Delin result. Consider, consider X be a smooth projective variety in delta one cycle, so that is algebraic. So if delta is algebraic, we have that this integral is algebraic. But this, this proposition, together with one left theorem, will be used to obtain algebraic expression. In the, in the, in the two-dimensional case, we know that every, every whole cycle is algebraic. So in this case, we, the, this cycle, the whole cycle satisfies this property. This property. With this in mind, we have the following proposition. Hey, consider 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 X be the singularization of the weighted hypersurface D given by F. It where G is this polynomial. Here, here we have in the in the in the in the in, in the case two dimensional. It considered that this polynomial. Now consider a good form. 
Uh, a good form is a form in the affine part that comes from a form in the compactification. Now take the, the cycle in this form. We know the, the, the every cycle in you, we can, we can write in, in the, we can write as delta zero plus delta one. Now suppose the, the delta zero, delta, delta one are generic of cycle. <coughs> so if delta zero is delta one are generic of cycle, then it is satisfied that this is zero or this hypergeometric function are algebraic. The, the, Maybe you say uh, this, 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 uh, George, previous, previous, previous yeah. slide, yes. Yeah. I mean, uh, both these uh, factor, the algebraic factor, which you put equal to zero, or this F, they appear in the in the formulas of the, the integrals of our... Uh, About of our the formulas side. here is you can see better. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, the idea of the proof. Uh, using the Delin proposition, if you take a strong generic of cycle, you know that this integral is algebraic. But, but, but this means that this expression, this sum, is zero or this with this with this factor is algebraic but in this context in this context you can prove that the this product of beta, of beta function over p is algebraic this means the hypergeometric function is algebraic so um now, as an application, we will reobtain results already shown by Schwarz. Okay, the corollary is the next. The, this hypergeometric function are algebraic. We obtain this coral, corollary using the above proposition with a strong generic code cycle, or, or maybe a generic code cycle. Oh, no, sorry. With, with a strong generic code cycle. So that the sum or rules of unity is no zero. Now for comment, in this world, Schwarz, Schwarz, Schwarz gave a complete description of the algebra hypergeometric function. In this is, is just a particular case of Schwarz work. Okay. A natural, a natural question in the, in the, pro, on, in the, the limb proposition is if, is, if the, the limb propos, proposition is a street, is a street is it still true when we change the hypothesis on algebraic cycle by hot cycle? This is precisely the statement for, for the following conjecture. Hey, this is exactly the, 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 the limb proposition, just change the algebraic cycle by hot cycle. It means if you take, if you take, a, if you take a, a, a hot cycle, this integral is algebraic or no? We don't know that, but 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 ob observe that if the hot conjecture is true, every hot cycle is algebraic cycle is algebraic cycle. In use using the the limb proposition, we have that this conjecture is true. So, in some in some case, even when the hot conjecture is is unknown. This conjecture is true. For example, for example, the limb proof that this conjecture is true for the classical Fermat variety, even though the hot conjecture is no, is no, is not no, is no, no, in this case. And with this, he obtained algebraic relation between values of the gamma function. These are the same ideas that we are developing in this tau. Okay. Here, here we have a, par a partial result in this, in the direction of this conjecture. Okay, now, I, sorry. Now, as usual, consider the variety defined by this polynomial, uh, and then 
you consider the, the singularization, where, where the polynomial G is given by this form. This is a particular form. In consider, it considered this polynomial. So when you take a strong generic hot cycle, it compute this integral on, on a good form, we have, we have this, this integral is algebraic. Okay, but, but a natural question is, is, is this true for, for forms with pole of order two? I don't know, but, 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 but the next slide gives some, some lights. Okay, the next, okay, the next proposition is say, is this, in the same context of the previous proposition, consider a good form, a good form. So uh, when we take, sorry. Hello? Yeah, I think your internet failed, but go ahead. Okay, okay. I, I, I say again, consider a good form with pole of order two so that the form with pole of order one is a good form. So when we integrate a, a strong generic code cycle, it is, okay? But, but observe, observe that, that, that in the two-dimensional case, this result is independent of this condition. We don't, in the, in the, Two-dimensional okay, we don't we don't need this condition. If, if we know that that these periods are combination of hypergeometric function. So what, what will be the nature nature of the hypergeometric function that appear in the integral when this form is not a good form? When you when you when you did this integral. Mm -hmm. So explore uh, sorry. Any question? Maybe you recall that the good form is a form that uh, yeah. uh, that induces a differential form in the compact uh, uh, variety. It's, it's a fine part, but it induces uh, dif uh, differential uh, an element of the Durham cohomology of the compact variety. Yeah, yeah, yes, exactly. Okay, okay, I, okay, I, I repeat again. Okay, when, when. What 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 will be nature of the hypergeometric function that appear in this integral when 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 we don't have this condition in the in the two dimensional case? So exploring exploring this, we will find the following result. Okay, the following result is this: we 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 obtain we obtain expression with a hypergeometric function so that they are algebraic. But each hypergeometric function don't have algebraic. This result is obtained by integrating integrating a strong generic host cycle in the in the two-dimensional case with with a good form with pole of order two, so that the form with pole of order one is not a good form. Mm -hmm. We obtain this expression algebraic. And so to prove that this hypergeometric hypergeometric functions are not algebraic, we use the, the Schwarzbord. Okay, I think I speak very, very fast. Yeah, I think I finished. So thank you very much for your attention. Okay, <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, any question? Okay, uh, anyway, uh, maybe, uh, uh, maybe I, George didn't mention, but uh, to find algebraic relations, the complete list of algebraic relations between hypergeometric functions of the different parameters is a pro uh, the, appears as one of the, let's say, one of the important problems in uh, Wolfhard's uh, article. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Schwartz list is just considered each uh, algebraic of each uh, each uh, hypergeometric function. 
But if one considers two or three hypergeometric functions with different parameters, if they can be algebraically dependent or independent, it is not, uh, there is no method. And uh, George is trying to do this kind of uh, Deline's observation, the Deline's proposition to apply it in, in this context. Anyway, uh, any question? Let me see. Official question, maybe the, the session of the official yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If there is no any official, let me see if uh, Roberto. <laughs> I have to pick up the Roberto is here. Okay. So if there is no official question, let's. Uh, I will stop recording and then let's go to uh, the the next.